Hello, welcome Hello. to Expat American. I'm here with my new friend Tim Kirby. Yeah. And we are outside of Moscow, which I know you want to see more stuff outside of Moscow, halfway between Moscow and Tula. Tim has a vision. His vision is an American village in Russia, and he's going to show us that vision and the location today. Yeah, that's the mission. Let's get to it. It is calendar spring in Moscow, Russia. It is March, it is morning, so the sun is up because the days are getting longer. And there's a giant snowfall, in my opinion, on everything. It's falling down right now. Actually, it doesn't feel that cold, but everything is covered in snow running Kristoff to school and then Maxime to childcare. It's because you previous What's up, Kirby? Good, good, good to see you, man. Good to see you. It's my cameraman. Oh, all right, see. Let's do it. Started. All right, let's, yeah, let's do it. All right, guys. So I'm here with my new friend, Tim. And Tim, the other day, one of my subscribers said, who is this guy? And I was encouraged because it made it sound like I was this mysterious guy, like James Bond or Ethan Hunt. So I wanted to ask you, for people that don't know you, <laughs> yeah. who are you? Oh, oh that's, a, that's a deep philosophical question. Well, I, I could say, uh, if you want to put it in very short terms, I'm kind of a C-list celebrity in Russia. Uh -huh. So I, as you can hear from the way I speak, I'm American and uh, I moved to Russia long, long ago in 2006. But during the very earliest days of YouTube, I sort of got lucky. I started during you doing YouTube when it was fair and open and anyone with some interesting content could become really successful, and I did. And uh, thanks to that, I was able to find a, a sna some snazzy work in the uh, media and uh, because I never ever made any money on YouTube despite the lots of views and all that stuff. Uh, I transitioned over to actually working for other people, and uh, that worked out to be the best thing. Well, now I work a lot for myself, too, with donations and all that, but uh, yeah, so I'm someone who kind of got uh, a little bit lucky, right place at the right time, and the uh, right gift of gab. Traveling through Russia, through Moscow traffic, headed mm -hmm. out of town, what are you going to show us today, Tim? Well, we're going to go to the spot where, in theory, Hopefully the American village will be so it's gonna be uh, Well, I'm kind of waiting for the final stamp of approval on this But it's basically going to be a place where we're gonna take this huge like 30 hectare or more whatever uh, plot of land and sort of subdivide it and uh, create a spot for a bunch of immigrants uh, from Western English well, English speaking countries help them get through the immigration process Especially as sort of a special exception uh, so that way we can create this uh, interesting almost English speaking community in Russia that'll mirror uh, in some ways, the German villages around the Volga region that uh, happened uh, during uh, Yekaterina II's uh, reign there. So, uh, yeah, it's just going to be an interesting, unique community and a uh, method to come to Russia that's uh, a lot easier than the normal <laughs> process. Wow. That is a yeah. fantastic idea. You know, genetically, it looks like my family line were, was part of those Volga Germans. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh. Yeah. I'm not okay. sure, it's not confirmed, but I'm 10% German and my great-grandparents who left Russia and came through Ellis Island, yeah. they had uh, German names, or one of them had a German name, so we're speculating now. Uh, I'd like to research it and maybe do it for a show. All right, we have come to the site of Tim Kirby's proposed American village. Not a whole lot to see, but it is definitely magical with the snow falling down and clinging to the leaves of the trees. Uh, it's a little bit different when you've uh, looked at it from uh, the map view for like months, trying to draw where all the streets are gonna go and how everything's gonna look. So almost in a way, it's weird. It's kind of like I'm trying to like, you know, uh, 
match the map uh, in my head with the reality around it. So for me, I was even just saying to my audience uh, here via this GoPro about how for me, it's almost like a spiritual experience. This is awesome. This is really, really it. And we are so close to actually starting this thing, man. It's, 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 it's crazy. So it's a, it's a, it's a good feeling to be here. So uh, you're hoping this summer, perhaps? Yeah, that's, that's what they told me. They want to do it. For, they want to start first half of 2023. But then again, it's already March as we film this. And um, it's one of those things with the government, man. Well, well, but again, maybe one of your, some of your viewers are curious why the government, because as an immigration project to get foreign people to come here, uh, I mean, if I was just like a real estate developer, that's one thing. But, you know, you have to have a legal mechanism to, to get into Russia, to immigrate to here, you know? Right, 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 right. And that's a big part of the project. So you can have around 200 families get through the immigration process uh, without uh, needing to be married to a Russian citizen or being born in the Soviet Union. Um, to be honest, those are like the only two exceptions. So, you and know. You call it American village, but it would just basically a place that would be friendlier or, or easier to English speakers. Is that yeah, it's thinking? for all, yeah, it's for all of the English, native English speakers. That's sort of the uh, kind of cutoff line because uh, we kind of want to make a community where there's at least something sort of uniting us. But again, it'd be kind of weird to do it only America. It just has the American village thing because it sounds nice. That's one of those things where when you pitch an idea to a Russian bureaucrat, that kind of naming, ooh, really, this American village in Russia, where if it was called something like, I don't know, the speaking village in Russia, they'd be like, this this is stupid. We don't do this. This is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's a little bit of a marketing to a particular audience. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's so. see some of the other sites in this area that, that people right. might want to know about if they were to come live here. Josiah had to go to class at his university. So our cameraman is none other than Ricardo. What's up? From the video, is going? Moscow Mexican? <laughs> Tim is gonna take us to a church nearby. So anyone who's thinking about maybe relocating to Russia and perhaps living in his village, you can kind of see some of the places. Tim, what kind of people do you think uh, Russia could benefit or is in need of as far as career people or workers or whatnot? Well, at this point, to be honest, uh, Russia's just underpopulated in general. I mean, anyone who's just a good, honest person who's willing to uh, pay taxes and abide by the law and assimilate in a society is the person that Russia needs. I mean, that might sound kind of kind of vague or kind of like a cop-out answer, but that's really who the country needs. Right, right, We just right. need really more people. The, uh, in general, uh, a healthy market for any market is about 300 million people. And America and China have that. And Russia really doesn't. Mm. And so uh, we just need people. And the one nice thing is there's plenty of space. For those of you who are American like your space, uh, we got plenty of space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This no. is like an hour, a little over an hour's drive Definitely. from the border of Moscow. And look at what it looks like, you know? Yeah, I agree. So. I think law-abiding, fruitful people is what any yeah. country needs to be strong. Yeah, that, that good old middle class. snowing so much we decided to drive a little to check out this church nearby since we are halfway between moscow city biggest one of the biggest cities in the world and then tula which i assume is one of the smallest <laughs> what, what type of work would people expect to perhaps get if they were to live here well thankfully uh one positive side of a particular crisis that happened a few years ago is that working from home is very popular in russia and uh, I think that uh, this provides a great opportunity when we get the internet going because the internet in Russia is really cheap. It's very well developed. This is a great thing for people who want to work from home. For example, one guy who wants to do this has been sort of gotten, at least we'll put it this way, because of some of his writings uh, about history, he's gotten a nice knock on the door from certain authorities in a certain English speaking country. And he can continue to write about history comfortably from the village. Of course, within the village itself, we're going to need people to do construction. Uh, some people say that they're former police officers, and uh, there are there is actually a tourist police service in Moscow where they need the police officers to speak foreign languages very well. Wow. So I'm going to try to maybe work with them to see, well, if they speak a foreign language extremely well, but speak, speak Russian awfully, uh, will that work? Is that acceptable? <laughs> you know, that's kind of the strategy there. Uh -huh. Sorry if my eyes went away. We uh, Just kind of a dog just charged the wheels of the like, vehicle. What? A dog. No, a dog. Another loose dog. <laughs> Two of them. Yeah. German Shepherds, actually. Yeah. I wonder if they have Russian passports, though. No, they should. 
Oh, we wanted to film the church that's over here, but the the, the uh, German shepherds seem to be surrounding the vehicle. Get out of here. <laughs> Привет, собака. On the camera. <laughs> if you come to a little monastery here, this is not technically on the American Village proposed property site. This is just north of it uh, by like half a kilometer. Um, but if you're interested in living here, here it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. We wanted to take a moment to show you another Russian product, this time from our friend Ira. So tell us first, guys, what's the name of the product and what's it for? Ну, это бренд моей крафтовой косметики. Я делаю все это руками. Называется флоротерапия. От слова флора – это растение, терапия – это, ну, терапия, да? То есть терапия природы для нашей кожи. Составы полностью натуральные. Вот. Здесь не входят силиконы, парабены, продукты нефтехимии. Входят только натуральные масла, экстракт растений, различные там пептиды, то, что полезно. Я по образованию биохимик, и я я понимаю, что наша кожа, ей важно питаться, mm -hmm. вот, и чтобы ничто не заражало ее. Здесь mm -hmm. даже консерванты зеленые, то есть она э, хранение так медлительного хранения, но очень действенная. Mm -hmm. вот, то есть я еще не so have different bottles here. Ира, can I try some of this? Uh, yes. Should yeah. I see how it works? What would you recommend? Mm. Я рекомендую, наверное, попробовать сыворотку антивозрастную. Это сыворотка, она с натуральным маслом макадамии. Здесь масла, витамины, гиалуроновая кислота. It contains some oils, vitamins, hyaluron, acid. Maybe I pronounced it wrong. Да, да. But it's something healthy and natural. Она имеет антивозрастной эффект, то есть. Yeah, it has an anti-aged effect. Антиоксидант, это росло, да. Наноси несколько капелек, хочешь на руку, можно на лицо сразу. Она запечатана сильнее. Набирай пипеточкой. И по массажным линиям можешь распределять на лоб, на посильнее ты прям выдавливай. Вот, и давай флакончик, и по массажным линиям. И потом уже вбивающим движением. Освежилась и увлажнилась. Прекрасно. Здесь на лбу еще чуть-чуть. Красивая. Да, вот можно попробовать крем под глаза или просто увлажняющий. Um, От морщин, eyes, да, здесь wrinkles, wrinkles, mm -hmm. содержит пептид змеи, uh, это, oh, яда змеи, the, то есть oh, разглаживает. The, um, has, um, poison, uh, я думаю, косметика эффективна, потому что я как химик разбираюсь в составах. I think my cosmetics is effective because uh, I am a biologist, uh, chemist, and I understand the cosmetics a lot in the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Так как кожа – это тоже орган наш организм. Our skin is also a part of our body. Она хочет кушать, питаться. It и wants to eat. Любое питание должно быть натуральным, потому что вы сами знаете, когда мы питаемся правильно или нет. Any food should be natural, because you know, if we eat healthy food, we feel good. Да, то есть по факту мой крем можно кушать. Actually, my cream can be eaten. Потому что в составе натуральные масла, увлажнители, коллаген, эластин, гидролаты растений, витамины. То есть это все полезно для нашего органа кожи. Также сейчас есть экотренд, как мы все знаем. И очень важна упаковка, моя упаковка стеклянная. 
Я за качество герметичности тоже отвечаю каждого компания. И также консерванты. Моя косметика не длительного хранения. Небольшим количеством консервантов. Well, thanks so much, Ira, for making my wife look even more beautiful. Mm, thank you. I love your wife. <laughs> thank you very much. So Tim and I got to go into that monastery and we just had coffee with monks. Maybe that could be a future episode. Yeah, coffee. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, we actually did talk to him about that. That may be coming back because the one monk, because uh, he used to work at the, uh, you know, the Atomic Energy Agency, uh, he made a big life shift. Um, well, he spoke pretty good English, and uh, yeah. he got really into the sort of the philosophy and ideas about how Russia's changing, how things are working, and it was really nice. Um, uh, I'll tell you one thing is, uh, whether you're religious or not, you should really have the ch take the chance to maybe talk to someone from the church, not to convert, but they're really fascinating. You, yeah. you never meet in Russia a dumb Orthodox priest, I'll put it that way. <laughs> they right, uh, right. train them up real good. So. Yeah, and you definitely want to, if you're moving here, you want to be open-minded and considerate of the culture, you know, whether you consider yourself Christian or not. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, that's one thing about is assimilating, because uh, one thing is, someone who's doing this American village, there's been a little bit of blowback from Russians of like, why are you bringing here people to this one specific location? They're not going to assimilate. No, no, no. Well, assimilation is kind of part of it, you know? Uh, we can have a little English-speaking enclave, but ultimately... Uh, Russia is bigger than us and we have to sort of adapt to her rather than her uh, uh, adapting to us, which is a problem that a lot of immigrants have, so, or a lot of expats have. I'm glad you said that because I was actually thinking, you know, I'm from Florida and in yeah. Florida we have a lot of Spanish speaking people in the very south and it's grown <laughs> yeah. so much that Spanish is the dominant language in yeah. parts of the south and there are Americans and Floridians that say, no, 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 you need to speak English here. Oh, yeah. So are there critics of your project that say, what, what? You want Americans to come here and have their own city? Uh, yeah, well, the thing is, is that one, uh, maybe the difference between Florida, which has a very large Cuban population, is at least for the start, who knows how many people are going to come here. But our village here of 200 families, that's not a critical mass for people to be able to live separate from the rest of Russia, nor mm -hmm. do any of them want to. We right. don't want to create some sort of weird cult, you know? Right. Uh, right. They're right. going to have to work with Russian people. If they want to be employed in a Russian job, they're going to have to do it. And guess what? Their kids will learn Russian. Right. Because uh, even if you homeschool your kids, well, what are the sort of government guidelines? One of those most important things is you have to teach your kids to speak Russian. So the kids will grow up with native Russian no matter what happens. Tim, besides houses, what do you expect this village can have? Of an American football stadium at the very least, the first one in Russia. Oh, of course, yeah. Of course, it's not going to be an 80,000 seater. What I mean is it's going to be an American football field with like some, you know, metal or wooden uh, bleachers and stuff. But uh, as someone who plays in the league, uh, I owe it to the league to provide a nice uh, place for us to play a little bit of a bit of American culture uh, here uh, in Russia. So that'll be exciting. Um, but one thing that's more practical is that many of the uh, wives have been interested in sort of creating a paradoxical homeschooling school, as in some of the wives would sort of get together and uh, uh, have one building that would be sort of dedicated to be a school, but it would be run by locals. So that's another thing uh, we can wow. expect. Wow, yeah. wow. So like, uh, sort of like homeschooling, like Little House on the Prairie School, perhaps? Yeah, I don't even know what the, you'd want to really call the concept. It would just be kind of like, I don't know, you get together with your neighbors and do the home, a collective homeschooling? Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. that's it. Yeah. That might be the proper term. And yeah, my wife told me, she was talking to you, that you want to get American football going here. Oh, yeah. Which sounds like a lot of fun. Well, it, it is going. It's just it's stuck in this nether realm of having a lot of teams, but not a lot of money. <laughs> so there are teams already. Oh, yeah, there's about like 40. But they're stuck in this sort of like semi-pro limbo, and we really want to make this a big thing. So it's more a matter of taking this to the next level. So like I said, huh. there's no dedicated American football field. And uh, that's one thing I could maybe change through this project. But there's a lot of stuff that could uh, happen to uh, you know, improve the league. So it stuff. appears there is an audience for it. 
Well, people show up. I mean, we're not exactly wow. selling out packed houses, but again, that's why we need more money so we can start doing more advertising, uh, sharing more information about the game, making it clear that we're not playing rugby. Uh, you know, stuff like that so people actually know uh, what's going on and they can get into it. And also making more deals with uh, the only form of legal gambling in Russia, sports gambling organizations. Yeah, I, I grew up in Tallahassee, Florida, so the Florida State Seminoles, that's like a religion. Football oh, yeah. is such a big deal, such a celebration. Right, look, I'm going to turn on my camera, too. We're going to do two. It's two camera time. Please, because please. Because I wanted to just show everyone that. So this, this right here where the truck is, is where the northern part of the village is. So we just crossed the border. Don't worry, there'll never be border guards. <laughs> so we crossed the northern border, and now we're looking kind of south at the territory, but it goes way, way, way back that way just with some trees kind of in the middle it looks very small from here but it's a huge amount of land so yeah plenty of room for football <laughs> so yeah dude i'm so happy we did this man i just wanted to thank you personally because it's because of this guy that we're out here so absolutely thank you, thank yeah, you very a much a lot of fun a lot of fun yeah. One thing we we're just talking about was uh, what are, what are the places around here are there to eat? And I was telling Joe that there's kind of always something, but if we fill this valley here with uh, 200 uh, families from uh, English-speaking countries, uh, trust me, someone's going to order uh, open a cafe. I'm absolutely oh, sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind of cafe it's going to be. Something but it's Georgian, be... perhaps. That would be yeah. Perfect. And the bureaucracy of it's going to be way lighter than in America. Imagine that. Try to go to an American suburb and just put a cafe on your front lawn. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> but in Russia, it can, baby. <laughs> so, freedom. And anyways, the property ends all the way down there at those trees, very, very far down there. And I think that's where, here, where Joe and I are going to bask in the glory of this open field and then get back in the car. So, yeah, all right. So we have come to a church in the area. This is not on the property that Tim is proposing. This is yeah. in the area. So if you're curious, what's it like in this part of Russia near yeah. the village? Here's a church. Yeah. style, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, on the map it said this place is called Podmoklova, okay? And one of the cool things is that it seems like it's also a village where people actually live here all year round. So we're seeing a lot of houses with, you know, people outside fixing their cars, shoveling their snows. So it's definitely a real picture of what rural life looks like in Russia, which is awesome. I love the rural, rural life in Russia, by the way. It's awesome, dude. Except yeah. for if you need, like, maybe spinal surgery. Then the city's good. Other than that, hey, you don't need it. So. I was thinking, Tim, if you're single... <laughs> And if, let's say you're in your mid-20s and you're graduating yeah. from the university and you like the idea of Russia, would it be a good place to come to? Well, yeah, because the one thing is, if you're in your 20s, the one thing you do is you have a lot of um, energy, right? And the thing is, like, as someone who did, the, I bought my first house for $15,000, no heat, no uh, water. There was electricity, but it was done badly, so it had to be completely redone. And with the help of some locals and my own, uh, the sweat of uh, my brow and a lot of YouTube videos, I turned it into a house where you can live all year round, okay? Wow. So if you're in your 20s and you're just starting your life and you're part of that American generation, or I should say American Western generation, where it's like you don't really see much prospects for yourself, like I did when I was 20, you know, when I was working 40 hours a week just to be able to buy hamburgers to survive till the next check, you know, the paycheck this is a good option for you because as soon as you get kind of far away from moscow the prices drop and you can buy something here that'll be yours and fix it up and make it just as nice as some of the houses are around here in fact i think maybe later we should uh, uh have a cameraman ricardo here uh, maybe take a little bit of a stroll down the street because there are some nice oh, new yeah, houses yeah, 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 yeah. here and that's all stuff you can do yourself if you can build a stick frame home in america although it's better to do a block home in russia but stick frame homes are okay if you can do a stick frame home in america by yourself which in theory you can you could do one here Also guys, don't forget, I'm gonna put a link in the show notes and on the screen. Go to Tim's channel and yes. subscribe. Tim Kirby's Travels, but on Rumble it's called RTTT still. The old name on Rumble, new name on YouTube. So yeah, you'll find it, subscribe and help me out here, so. Definitely. right over here in front of us. What does that remind you of? Does it kind of remind you of the American Midwest? It does, definitely. <laughs>
Definitely. The windows, the roof, I mean, just look at it. It's like something you'd see in the Lady and the Tramp cartoon. Oh, exactly. And it's a stick frame building. It's the same technology that we use in America. And right. so that's all you need to do is watch all those videos in America about how to build a house. And uh, you can build that uh, yourself or have someone build it for you for real cheap. That is a very, very affordable home. Although it might be a little leaky when it comes to heating in winter, but whatever. That's a good point, Sam, because, you know, people are now working from home. And yeah. So you don't have to pay. And a, a huge price to live right in the center of the city. You can yeah. live anywhere. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but you see this thing over here? That's designed so you can drive your car up and there. Crawl under it and fix your car yourself. Russian technology. I'm an American, you're an American. Yeah. So we kind of know what Americans like. You've been yeah. here a lot longer than me. Mm -hmm. Where's a good place to vacation in Russia, in your opinion? Oh boy, that's a good one. Well, that's going to have to kind of be broken down into the idea of what kind of vacation okay, do you want. A good, if, smart man. If you want right. to do the beach vacation, you really have to go to Crimea. Why? Because like uh, the water around um, Sochi is okay, but it tends to get a lot of algae. And um, I've known people who've taken vacations there and they just kind of come out of the water green, you know, uh, algae mania. And that does not happen in the, I see the Crimea, I say Krim, the Russian way, in the Crimea. So that's probably your best beach vacation spot. If you are talking about like a ski vacation, if you have a ton of money, Rosa Hooter in Sochi is number one in the country. I love Rosa Hooter. Yeah, it's but you got, you got to pay for it. Uh, there are a lot of other options, though. Maybe, uh, well, don't worry. you can do skiing on Sakhalin Island, and Sakhalin Island is weird, and it's different, and all the food comes from, like, Korea, so it's weird Korean food. Everything about Sakhalin is just different. It's a very interesting experience. You should go there, and they have plenty of skiing. Uh, if you want to do the event, the thing where you're like, oh my god, dude, we're on a road trip, whoa. We filmed on my channel, Tim Kirby's Travels, uh, the Chuiski Tract Highway, which is a highway that goes from uh, around, I think, Barnaul, uh, all the way through all of the Altai region to the Mongolian border. We filmed it all, wow. and that was awesome. And so much of the stuff we filmed was just drive, park the car, walk over there and look at it. It was very, very easy. Very cool, great food. Uh, uh, of the vacation or the things we filmed, like a vacation I'd want to do myself, that one. Nice, yeah. yeah. For me, vacations are one of three things it's vacation for sport, vacation mm. for romance, or yep. vacation with kids. Well, vacation for romance, there are actually uh, a lot of like little. Um, kind of almost like hotel complexes around Moscow where people can just sort of go and have a little bit of time with nature, do some swimming, have the romantic, you know, uh, meal afterwards with your wine and candles. There's a, that's actually very developed, especially around Moscow. But uh, if you're romantic like I am, there were plenty of uh, like little cabins you could rent or around along that path uh, along the Chuisky Tract. So you could have your uh, freshly slaughtered goat that the locals prepare for you. Wow. And, uh, well, you know, but uh, you share the goat, you share the love. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, one time, at one place, they actually did, because uh, we wanted to, to do, like, a taste test of, like, all their different local foods. They're just like, well, let's just slaughter a whole goat. So we had, like, one goat on a table. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, some of the parts were good, some were not. I'll tell you that much. Uh, eating a uh, stomach and all that is... Uh, uh, not my cup of tea. <laughs> All right, so Tim and I wanted to say goodbye from his hopeful project dream here, yeah. the American Village. Mm -hmm. What did you think of it? What do you think of what we showed you? Leave a comment right now. Let us know. Let Tim know. Click like, subscribe, ring the bell notification, click the box to see what happens next. Any parting words, Mr. Kirby? Well, I'll tell you one thing, guys. I know it's kind of an empty field right now because, you know, it is an empty field. But, uh, hey, they said that uh, they're going to be running a new gas line through here. They put a cell phone tower back there. Don't worry, 4G, not 5G. Uh, and there's already a little Dacha village bordering here. So uh, no problem with electricity and gas. I think everything can come together quickly if the government allows it to go quickly. It's all in their hands, so uh, pray for me, friends. Amen. <laughs> we will. So Ricardo and I just stopped and had lunch, or dinner I guess it is, at this Russian gas station. And Ricardo, I want you to tell everyone, what's the name of the hamburger you ate? The very first thing I noticed was 
Mexicanski burger, which pretty much <laughs> means Mexican burger. <laughs> so we ate a Mexican burger in Russia. I just want to take you home with me so much. Jump in the truck, baby. Come on. You can live with me. I'm lots